Hello viewers, I'm Simon Christie and you've tuned in to the one and only 4 Drive TV. Now we have a massive episode planned for you, so let's get stuck straight into it. Tread lightly, keep it safe, play hard. Now viewers, you're used to seeing us driving the Colorado 7 around, but today we've got something very different. We're test driving the Axial SCX10 JK Wrangler. Well, as you can see, crawling around with a mate and these Axial JK Wranglers is an absolute stack of fun. But what's important to note about these little beauties is that giving the accelerator trigger a bit of a squeeze produces some amazing results. These vehicles aren't just rock crawlers, they're actually more akin to rock racers and you can definitely get some speed out of them. So what's more fun than cruising around the tracks with these? It's joining up with a mate and actually racing them. Check out this action. Well guys, RC4 driving is certainly growing, it's definitely popular, and it's a great way to add to your four-wheel drive family. Maybe when you can't go real four-wheel driving, this is what you can do to keep that four-wheel drive passion alive. Not just for the kids, it's for us grown-ups as well, the big kids. And I have to say, these ready-to-run Axial SCX10 JK Wranglers are awesome fun, especially if you've got a mate, there'll be no stopping you. Well thanks guys for tuning in. Hi, I'm Brett from 4 x 4 Obsession. Today, we're gonna to talk about the Nissan Patrol and the Nissan D22 that's fitted with a ZD30 engine and the inherent problems that that engine actually has. The engine's had a pretty bad rap since it's come out, even though Nissan has made some rectifications to make the engine far more reliable. But especially in the early version, we did have a lot of problems with engines blowing up early or failing early. There's a lot of theories as to the reason why this was happening, and there's a lot of products that are out on the market to help limit this. Probably the best of them to help limit the problems with this engine is what they call an anti-hand grenade kit, which is an EGR block off plate, a set of doors valves, and a catch can. The doors valves are designed to limit the boost or to stop the boost spike, which these vehicles do suffer with. The catch can is actually designed to catch any oil coming through the fume system or the natural breather system of the vehicle. This creates issues with the mass airflow sensor. If it gets oil on it, the computer thinks the engine's running rich and will start leaning it off. 
it actually usually leans off towards number four and cracks number four piston. So these are fairly cheap insurance for this sort of engine. The other issue that these do have is heads. The heads are actually really well designed, really well bolted down, which is where the floor actually starts. Because they are bolted down and because you have a cast iron block and aluminium head, the alloy and the cast actually heat and cool at different temperature rates, causing the head to crack. The other upgrade that is a good idea with this vehicle is to upgrade the intercooler. These do run hot internal temperatures or pyrometer temperatures. So putting a, a decent quality upgraded cooler like either a HPD or a cross country cooler will actually help the longevity of the engine. The cooler you can get those temperatures, the better it'll run, the more reliable it will be. With all the problems with this engine, conversions have become quite popular as the rest of the car is pretty much bulletproof as been proven by many years with Patrol especially that the drive line, you really don't need to do a lot to it to run horsepower. Most popular conversions these days is either to put the TD42T or the TI in, which is the factory 4.2 six cylinder turbo diesel or the turbo intercooled diesel that come out of the Patrol or was optioned in the Patrol up till 06, or put a Gen 3 or Gen 4. Both these conversions are reasonably expensive to do, but as far as cost goes to do a full rebuild on a ZD30, it's fairly comparative considering that you're going to spend twelve to $14,000 to do a full rebuild on a ZD30. Conversions generally starting around about 16000 for the TD42T and going up from there, obviously depending upon what you want. So if it fits your budget and it's a vehicle that you really want to keep, it's always worth having a look at the conversion side of things as well. Having owned three of the ZD30 engine patrols, they're not, as a lot of people seem to think, a total lemon, but there are some things that you can do that I put under preventive maintenance, which will actually help with the longevity of the vehicle. I've traveled Australia in these vehicles and never had an issue, but I also do take these precautions pretty much from brand new. So just a few things to think about if you do own a ZD30, in a patrol especially, that the rest of the vehicle is obviously a great vehicle, been around a long time and still probably one of the most popular vehicles and sought after vehicles for touring and off-roading. So if you're looking at buying one or you own one, it's just a few points that you can have a look at. I'm Brett from 4 x 4 Obsession. Hope this has been helpful to you. Thanks for watching 4 Drive TV. Holden's toughest 4x4 ever has arrived. Introducing the all-new Holden Colorado 7. It comes with seven seats as standard and it's loaded with serious off-road grunt. You'll get three-ton towing and the awesome 470 newton meter Duramax diesel engine, plus an impressive weighting depth and hill descent control, all for the hardcore adventurer. The all-new Holden Colorado 7 is here. Take it off-road at your Holden dealer today. Now who doesn't want more power? And I bet that most of you with diesels have your hands in the air. DP chip is not a snack food, it's the real deal. And simply modifies the engine fuel injection parameters to increase performance to a measurable difference of up to 35% more power and torque and up to 10% better economy. DP chip, the only diesel power chip with a five year warranty, 24 seven tech support and user adjustability. For more information on DP chip diesel power, call 02 1022 or visit dpchip.com. Got a ute? Need more space? Need it to be safe and secure? And of course stylish? Then look no further than Carry Boy. Designed with the true lines of your vehicle in mind and the ultimate in functionality, a Carry Boy canopy will transform the look and performance of your utility. For more information on why Carry Boy are the world leaders in canopy design, durability and practicality, visit carryboy.com.au. If you've got a car that was manufactured from 2005 onwards, and it's a Toyota or a Nissan, any of the major Japanese forward drivers, Mitsubishi and all the rest, you probably have a smart alternator in that car. Now it may be one of the earlier types, which is a temperature compensated only one, or it may be a full ECU controlled one with a body control module and all those wonderful things. People ask, are some alternators are good things or bad things? They're part of modern vehicles. It's like saying, is ABS a good thing or a bad thing? It's part of a modern car. We have it, we live with it. 
It does give us better fuel economy, it gives us more overtaking power. They're hardly bad things to be concerned about. But from a charging point of view, it means you, the consumer, have to do a little bit more research to find out your options. Don't just think DC DC is the only option. There are other choices. And that will be affected by the choice of battery, the choice of charging system, where the battery is located, what you want to use it for. Like buying a suit of clothes, you get one measured up and tailored to suit your needs, you'll be absolutely delighted with the results. You take an off-the-shelf item, you're going to get what you're going to get. So guys, do your research, talk to the experts, get some information, find out and move forward. This week we have highlights from the Superior Engineering Farm Fantastic Showdown held mid-year at Alimba in southeast Queensland. It's a short course motocana style event where rigs go head to head on a single man-made track. A wet June weekend set the scene for this tough shootout and a diversity of classes came together for this semi-serious short course trial and demonstration. Whilst the weather barely held for the first day, the Saturday night and Sunday racing evolved into a swamp fest, with continuous rain turning the entire course into a wet and slippery mud pit. Held over the Farm Fantastic Expo weekend, the event entertained the crowd, promoting the competitive side of four-wheel driving, whilst undercover Expo sites offered visitors a diversity of parts information and expert advice to improve their recreational four-wheel drives. But the action was out on the track, so let's follow some of the highlights. Thanks again to Superior Engineering for their vast support of the four-wheel drive scene, including this event. Without their involvement, events like this just couldn't run. For more information on upcoming 4x4 events, check out the four-wheel drive TV calendar at fourwheeldrivetv.com.au.
as with any quality 4x4 accessory, a snorkel can give your vehicle that tough look and also make it outback ready. But how long does a snorkel take to install? Well, typically an experienced mechanic will take around three hours to install a snorkel. It's not simply a bolt-on case, but if you're an experienced home mechanic, you can have a crack at it yourself. Now, for me personally, when it comes to fitting a snorkel, you need to drill a 100 millimeter hole through your panel. Now, if you're comfortable to do that yourself, fine. If you're not, get an experienced mechanic who fits high quality snorkels to do it for you and you'll be guaranteed the job gets done properly and you'll have a warranty for the fitment as well as the snorkel itself. But a high quality snorkel made in Australia, UV20 stable, will also come with very precise and very easy to follow comprehensive instructions. It'll have diagrams, it'll have templates on there that make it quite an easy job. So guys, fitting a snorkel at home, the question comes down to, are you prepared to whack that 100 mil, or possibly even bigger, hole saw through the side of your Pride and Joy to fit that snorkel? If you've got the confidence, have a crack. If not, get an experienced mechanic to do it. But like I've always said, only deal with reputable Australian companies and make sure the 4x4 accessories you fit to your vehicle, even if you need to save a little bit more, are high quality products. And in the case of snorkels, you should ensure that that snorkel is made from UV20 stable polyethylene. It's manufactured here in Australia. It's backed by an Australian company with an Australian warranty and service people that you can talk to right here in Australia. And it's backed by service agents Australia wide. Why would you go for anything else when the performance and protection of your vehicle is paramount? You've invested heavily in the vehicle, so make sure you put the best 4x4 accessories on it. In this day and age, most modern four-wheel drive vehicles do come with some form of traction control, electronic traction control. And whilst these can be effective in some situations, the bottom line is that they're a reactive device. They only start to work once the wheels begin to slip. The other thing is they're not manually selectable. The benefit of a manually locking diff lock, like the ARB air locker, is that they're fully selectable by the user at the flick of a switch. When track conditions become difficult, you can select the air locker before you get into trouble, allowing you greater control and much less of a reliance on momentum to get you up to some tricky spots. The other benefit of a manually locking differential is that you know when it's locked. You get 100% traction across the axle when the diff is locked. Traction control, on the other hand, is pulsing on and off all of the time. It's reactive, as I've said, and it just doesn't cut the mustard when it comes to really tricky off-road situations. The other disadvantage with electronic traction control system is they work on the ABS system. If used extensively, these can overheat, and usually they overheat when you need them the most. So the benefits of a manually locking selectable diff lock outweigh traction control in just about every circumstance. So yes, electronic traction control can be helpful off-road. The bottom line is though, a manually selected air locker system will provide all the benefits of electronic traction control, but with much greater control and safety. The next generation of shock absorbers is here. Leading the way in 4x4 suspension development, Old Man Emu introduces the most advanced and finely tuned shock absorber on the market. Nitro Charger Sport incorporates a new valving system that instantly adapts to all terrain for an outstanding smooth ride and phenomenal control. Backed by a three year 60,000 kilometre warranty, you can trust Nitro Charger Sport, built in Australia for Australian conditions. When the going gets tough, when you're bogged down deep, or when your mates reach out for help, Mean Mother is your first choice for recovery gear and winches. From the Tough as Nails Edge Series, built for passionate four-wheel drivers and packed with quality components and features, to the over-engineered Boss Series, offering superior reliability, endurance and efficiency under the toughest conditions, Mean Mother has a winch for all applications. Check out meanmother.com.au and explore your limits with a Mean Mother winch, the mother of all winches. At Terrain Tamer, we've tried to take all the hard work out of four-wheel driving, so you can be an expert as well as an enthusiast. Our parts interpreters talk fluent four-wheel drive because we're talking with 40 years' experience. We've got all the four-wheel drive parts and accessories that you'll ever need, so you can toss them in the back for cheap insurance. 
When you're miles from the closest mechanic, you'll appreciate that advice. Terrain tamer, we talk fluent before we arrive. Hi there, how are you going? I'm Hayden. This is my wife, Jess. We've got a 1977 FJ45. It's been a bit of a work in progress. She's had plenty of a hard life. Rolled her a couple of times and drowned her a few more. We always keep fixing her up though, try and keep her looking as good as we can. Did an overspring with Obsession 4x4 a little while back. Uh, pretty much everything on her is custom. Custom tray, custom interior, digital gauges, LED lights, twin snorkels. She's running 35 inch Mickey T's. We used to head out to Wombat a fair bit. We used to head out with the old man and carry the fuel cans for the dirt bikes and a few other bits and pieces. Hopefully planning on a few trips out to Ballarat with some mates in the near future. Should be a good trip. We managed to pick up a couple of sponsorships, so we try and keep it looking as good as we can. She actually took out Ute of the Year in 2011 at the Denny Ute Muster. Uh, we we're pretty happy with that, especially considering some of the competition that goes to Denny. Thanks heaps to the guys out at Autobahn Airport West. Stuart for helping us out every now and again and getting ready for shows and stuff. Details on how to win a place in the Your Rig weekly competition can be found on the Full Drive TV Facebook page. And each successful entrant wins an electric blue span set snatch strap, a Nava outer circuit double fuse holder, a Nava power cup, and a Nava cigarette lighter extension lead, an Oricom handheld UHF kit including two 2 watt UHFs, a Mean Mother mug, a Mean Mother snatch strap bag, a Mean Mother umbrella and a Mean Mother stubby holder. A pair of smart scissors and an Emmy Sharp knife sharpener from our good friends at Keesler. An add-on Donaldson diesel fuel filter kit including chassis mount. A U-Fixit windscreen repair kit. A Superior Engineering cap and stubby holder. A Berrima diesel cap. An ARB Penrith stubby holder. A litre of emergency gear oil from 360 gearboxes, a cap from 360 gearboxes, a copy of 4x4 Australia magazine, a copy of Dirt Comp magazine and a Dirt Comp calendar, a copy of Wild Deer and Hunting Adventures magazine, a copy of Blitz Martial Arts magazine, two four-wheel drive TV medium stickers to add to your rig, two stubbies of Bundaberg ginger beer, an ARB air locker t-shirt, an ARB jacket, an ARB pair of socks, an ARB cap and an ARB old man emu jacket and it's all neatly wrapped up in an ARB cargo gear carry bag. Thanks heaps to Simon and Miranda and the four wheel drive TV crew. Uh, thanks very much for all the prizes. I'm sure we'll enjoy using them. Hi guys, Danny here out in the four wheel drive TV workshop. Now I thought it was time for a bit of an update on Project Zook. And while the Zook isn't actually here at the moment, because it's up the road at Reedy's 4x4 in Bendigo, getting some fabrication work done, I do have a delivery here from Low Range Off-Road that I want to show you. Now the first thing I noticed about the delivery was how well wrapped it was. Even though it's travelled halfway around the world, everything arrived with no damage and looked as good as it was when it left the factory, which is certainly a plus. Now, for the gear itself. First is this full replacement aluminium dash. Now while the stock Suzuki dash doesn't really leave a lot of room for the switches and controls that we're going to need, this one certainly does. It's a direct bolt-in replacement for the factory dash using standard mounting points and hardware. It's lightweight being aluminium, but it's also nice and strong and will look great squeezed in between the roll cage. It's actually a very smart design as it still incorporates the heat of the mister, which is something that we need to keep the car roadworthy and able to pass engineering. It also comes with a steering column surround to match the dash, which sure will look sweet. Now I'll probably run the stock Suzuki instrument cluster, but I'll be running a full complement of Nava sealed rocker switches. Now I just need to sort out the layout and get them in. The next item from Low Range Off-Road are these heavy duty chromoly rear axles so we can make the rear as strong as the front diff. With the reduction gears in the transfer case, 5.11 gears in the diffs and the larger tyres that will be running at low pressure on beadlocks, there'll be a lot of torque on the axles and we need all the strength we can get. Made from heat treated 3230 chrome molly, these axles are about 15% thicker than stock 
and feature rolled splines to maintain the most amount of strength possible. They're a simple bolt-in replacement for the Suzuki axles and should keep the 33-inch boggers turning nicely. Our last upgrade is going to help me come to a stop, safe and secure. Low Ranger's own rear disc brake conversion kit. This is a complete kit and allows us to run Sierra front calipers on the rear. We get caliper mounts, hubs, brake line plumbing and all the necessary bolts to swap out the drum brakes to a performance disc brake setup. I really like the fact that this kit uses full backing plates for the axles and doesn't use cut down ones. That'll help out with our bearing life considering how much mud this little rig will see. So we've been working hard on getting some of the best gear for Project Zook and the transformations are really starting to take shape. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon with more updates on Project Zook. G'day, my name's Brendan, this is my Navi Michael. We're here in a 82 Toyota Hilux. This is our second year at Top Truck and looking forward for a great weekend. Pretty well, I just kept the standard from last year. About 32 I think we got last year. Hoping to do better this year. Looking forward to doing Rocky Horror. We had a good run last year, got fourth on that last year. So not looking forward to the mud. Well, viewers, thank you for tuning in for another episode of your favourite four-wheel drive TV. You've been watching Simon Christie and the team, and remember, fourwheeldrivetv.com.au, stacks of prizes and information. Well, tread lightly, keep it safe, play hard. I look forward to your company next week.